Hello gamers, this is Rushcode, and today in UE4, I'm going to show you guys how I made a start menu screen in my classroom game. So when you start up the game, this is what it looks like. You have a play button, an options button, and a quit game button. When you hit the options button, it takes you to this screen, and I don't have any settings for my game, so I just put a back menu button here, so this goes back here. And if you hit play, it allows you to play the game. So that's what we're going to be doing today. There's a few other things I wanted to show but I don't think I'll have enough time in this video to show it and it's to do with a pause menu like this one here where you can click continue to continue or a quit game sort of uh, thing like a button to quit the game and retry. Let's get started making the start menu and see how we go. So in the contents page we have all of these different objects that we've made so far material instances, object actors and a pawn and a custom controller. So what we're going to do is make a new level and this is where the start menu is going to live in. So I'm going to call this start menu map and we'll open it up. So it's just a blank screen which is fine. There's nothing in this level and we're not going to be playing anything in this level. All we're going to do is make a menu screen and you can do that by going to user interface and clicking on widget blueprint which I will call start menu. So when you open that you'll get this screen and you can bring in a button like this for example. If you want to center it I think you need to, I'm still not sure how this works here but I think if you hold shift and control it'll get everything to the center which is great and then you can also bring a piece of text into the screen. Now I don't want to bring it into the button here directly, I'd rather bring it under the button in here as a child object for the button. So that's going to be attached to it, that way if I bring the button around it should go with it. So you can see it just moves with the button because the button is its parent. So again just going to make sure that's anchored to the center and the text block, well we can put some other text in here like play game. And as for the button, well let's make it a little bigger, change the color of the text change the color of the button as well and now we have a button we can use to play the game but if you compile this and play the game it's not going to work there's nothing that sh nothing shows up because we haven't attached this to the game itself we have to get the game to fire it up so we go to our start menu and click on blu blueprints we can open up the level blueprint and on begin play create widget it's like a class, well there's a start menu there. Once it's created we need to show it in the viewport so we'll add it to the viewport. And the owning player would be our control player, player controller. And then once this is added to the viewport we should be able to interact with it so let's see if that works. Oh there's an error. Well that's because of this. Okay so that needs to connect. Now I'll compile, play, Okay, and now we have our play game thing there, but there's a couple of problems with this. One is the cursor is still showing up, so we're going to have to cover that up. And also, the if I click the button, nothing happens. So we need to create some functionality for that. Coming back to this screen, we need to put in some kind of background. So if I type in background, well that creates a blur, I don't think I want that. So maybe um, some kind of border, would that work? If I put a border and bring that out. Yeah, that should work, just need to make it black and put it behind the button. So we can do that by using Z order, make this minus one and there we go. Now I want it to fit the screen so I'm going to click this guy. And now when we play this, we shouldn't see the cursor anymore. Okay, so the cursor is gone as you can see, but we need to now make some functionality for the button. So the first thing you want to do is click on the button and there are these different events that you can work with. So one of them is on clicked, which is the one you want. So as soon as you click it, it'll do something. So let's click that. When you hit the play button, it will start the game. So you want to load in the level. So I think that's load level. Uh, let me see the level name for this is not here. Okay where is the level? I think it's in the, uh, here it is in the maps. First person example map. So I'm going to copy that and paste that there. So there we go. Right so when we hit the button it should load up this map and then we can play it. I don't think we need to do anything else here so let's just compile that and see if it works. So we have our game and if you click play and nothing happens. Huh. Well, maybe something else is missing. I think something else that I could try is opening a level. Yeah, so open level. Maybe that's the one I'm, I'm actually after. So let me get that name and put it here. Get rid of this guy. And now we'll compile and see if this works. All right, so we have our button. Click play and there we go. Okay, so now we have the actual game. 
we can go in and do whatever we want. So open level is the right one, I got the wrong one earlier. And you'll notice that when you play, after as soon as you come in there's this mouse cursor still moving around, you have to actually click onto the screen to start playing. To skip that step, you want to change the UI surface of this, right? So, so uh, what is it, the game in input mode, I think? So input, input mode, set, input mode. Okay, so you can either do game and UI, game only or UI only. We want it to not have any mouse cursor moving around, so we don't want the UI, which means we just want the game only. And the player controller will be get player controller, and that's it. So if you compile and play, hit the play button and we're immediately inside the game. No cursor, you don't need to click it. It's probably a good idea just to set that up for any new map you start just because it'll skip that first annoying step of having to click every time you go in. And so the next thing to do for the start menu is creating a button for the settings and for quitting the game. It's just a matter of replicating the same thing. So I'm just gonna move this one up here a little bit and we're gonna copy and paste this into the canvas panel. Okay, so this is going to be for the settings. So we'll just put settings and we'll do one more for quitting the game. So there we go. Again, I'm just doing putting it roughly together, but you get the idea. For the settings, we want to do an on-click event again. And in, in this case, you'd want to make it go to a slightly different screen. So that screen is going to have a different canvas, I believe. I'm not sure I want to do that in this video. I might leave that for the next video just to show how it looks. Or actually, what I'll do is I'll fire up my actual game and show you what it looks like. So in my actual game, it has a menu widget here. Now, if we have a look at it, there's there's a lot more going on here, right? So there's this thing called a widget switcher, and that allows you to switch between two different menu screens. Here we have an option screen, um, and the other one's the main menu screen. So coming back to this one over here, you could create that here by looking for a widget switcher. Right, so you bring that in, put it into the canvas, and under that you want to create another canvas which I'm just going to rename to menu and all of this all these buttons can be pushed under that. Uh, this is going to look a, weird, a little weird just because that is not to the size I want it to be. So I change the anchors on that we have this working over here that's good. Bring the text into all of these. All right and then we bring that in there. And anchoring is such an important thing to try and just make sure everything is lined up correctly. Um, and so this will be one of the menus. I'm not going to do the functionality for switching the widgets, but, but that's sort of just something to start you guys off on if you want to go and try that for yourself. The main thing I want to cover here was just working with settings and the quit game. So with settings, obviously, you're going to have to go in and do an event here when you click the button. For now, I think we can just print to string to make sure it actually works. So I'll just say options, back to the designer, quit game, on click for this. And this will go to quit game, I believe is, yeah, here we go. And that should just outright quit the whole thing. So if we compile and play, we can either play the game, which goes into the game, or we can go into settings, which doesn't do anything, but you'll notice it just generates string at the, at the, uh, on the side there. And if you quit the game, it quits the game, which is great. So that's the basic functionality for a start menu. There's probably a few other things you can add to it. Really just, it's just up to you what you want to put in there. But this is what I did for my classroom game. So that's about it for this video. In the next one, I want to show you guys how I made the pause and quit game screens, which involves restarting the game as well. But if you enjoyed this video and you liked it, smash like, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button, join the channel. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Rush Code out.